Ah, uh, yes, hello, dears. This is the Ninth Dimensional Pleiadian Collective, and it is a pleasure and an honor to have an opportunity to connect uh, for the first time with some of you and um, again with others of you. So uh, we learned so much. You are sharing so much information with us um, that we really are honored to be able to work with you. It's not that we're just sharing information with you. Uh, it's a two-way street here and you are teaching and educating us. So we're very, very grateful for the opportunity to share the knowledge that we have and our perspective. So today we're going to talk about sound, the use of sound and the holographic earth. And there is a lot of energy in this particular area. And when you start operating and working with tone and sound, you can really amplify some of the vibrational signatures that are already present and anchored in the earth. So that's part of the reason why we wanted to talk about this specific topic here with you in this location, because many of you have contracted to work with the earth herself. Wendy checks in with us and she says, what do you want to talk about in this particular area? And we check in to see who all will be attending and what you will need before we give the topic. And uh, as we said, many of you have contracted to work with the earth and, and thus that's what we are discussing today. So as we start here, we'd like to talk about earth as a grand experiment, that it was an experiment of ascension, experiment, an experiment of descension and reascension. It is a melting pot of species from throughout the galaxy. It was seeded with the intent of trying to integrate duality, to try to integrate density. And there are five seed races who have given their DNA to humans and then thousands more that have donated their genetic material to all the other species that are part of your planet. You've only begun to scratch the surface as to what life really exists on this planet. You're, you're barely aware of the life forms that are within your ocean. And you have really not even begun to examine those that are living within the earth. Because there are other species that are living within the planet. Um, would we call the planet a hollow planet? No. But there are beings who are living just below the surface and who are thriving. Um, some of them are in also other dimensions. So you're going to be reintroduced to some of those species as you go through this ascension process. Um, some of the draconian energies that have been on your planet and been participating for quite a while. Those species have been working with the, with the inner earth, if you will. They've been working with holding a resonance and helping her and assisting her in this ascension process. We don't talk a lot about them, but they're there working hard. And who we're going to talk more about today are the, the fairies, the pixies, the divas, and the nature spirits. Uh, as you begin to commune more and more with them and assi getting assistance from them, uh, getting um, a little feedback, a little wisdom, a little knowledge about how to work with Mother Earth because this is what they've been doing in the higher realms. So they're there to remind you and to teach you about how to work with her. So with Earth, you have the genetic material from thousands of worlds, and along with that, you have the emotional experience of all of those genetic lines. And this is why we call Earth the planet of emotion. It has a huge range because of all of this experience. Other planets, other systems in the galaxy don't have this range. The range of emotion is usually much, much smaller. So if you've got something that you're trying to integrate, and by integration we mean letting go of all judgment, all right, that you are not seeing one side or the other as being right and the other being wrong. They are both expressions of source energy. And when you let go of that judgment and see them as being part of source, two sides of the same coin, that's what we call integration. And that's what you're trying to do right now is to let go of all of your judgments. And when you've got a small emotional range and you're trying to go through this process of integration, it can be really, really tricky because you may not have as many avenues to pursue simply because the range of emotion isn't as great. And we know that's a bit hard for you all to kind of wrap your mind around because you think, well, you know, emotions are what they are. How do you deal with the smaller emotional range? What's life going to be like on a planet with a smaller emotional range? And typically, uh, the focus of those species 
and what they want to work on is also narrowed. So if you're looking at the Sirius star system, many of those planets work with competition, they work with mm, cooperation, it's the other flip side of that, that coin. Um, they also work with communication, but it's, you know, there are a handful of things that they work on as opposed to all the things that you work on down here on this planet. Because what Earth was designed to do was to play out all of these galactic issues, all of the issues that are in these genetic lines that you've received, all the species that are living on this planet. You are trying to work out those issues on a smaller scale, where it was assumed, or that you hoped, it would be much easier, as opposed to trying to get a whole world to come along. You know, you were going to work in a little community. You know, maybe you've got 3,000 people in your community and you're trying to make a change to better the community. It's much easier to get those 3,000 people together as opposed to uh, 10 billion on another planet. So Earth was established to be this grand melting pot, this grand experiment. And other worlds have also um, been transformed and there were attempts to uh, create other experiments that were similar and unfortunately they didn't work out. All right, the planets were not able to handle all of the chaos, stress, and damage. And uh, the entire experiment went wrong. All right, it didn't work, it didn't succeed, and, and um, there was a lot of chaos that was created out of it. So this is actually the third grand experiment, the third grand planet to, to have this attempted. And this time it's different because there were more species that were added. There was more genetic range, more genetic experience that was given to the equation to assist in the potentials of it succeeding. So approximately 300,000 years ago, you all decided to that it was time to step into density. And you were having a very difficult time holding the frequency of density because you kept remembering that you were multidimensional beings. And so you created the, the aspect of the mind which would hold attachment, that would create distortion so that you didn't remember that you were a multidimensional being and so the game began. Now, Prior to that, you had the ability to move back and forth between operating systems. You could put yourself into that linear mindset. The problem was you couldn't stay there. You kept flipping to the other operating system. And you are now, once again, reactivating that new operating system, and that's called the heart center. You can also call it the soul center, if you wish. The mind was created and generated again to be the filter for the third dimensional perspective of linear time to see yourself as separate to see yourself as only experiencing one version of reality. The heart center allows you to see multidimensionally, to see all things as they truly are without any distortions. So what you're doing today is shifting from that mindset of the linear perspective, the filter of the mind into the heart more and more to allow you to go back through this process of ascension. Now, 300,000 years ago when they started this process, it was very quick. So once you forgot who you were, the more you forgot, the faster you forgot. All right, so it was a quick decline. And it's the same thing as you're coming up and out. The more you remember who you are, the more you increase your frequency, the more you remember who you are. All right, so it seems exponential on the way up, because it is. And Right now, as we're looking at it, the experiment's going pretty well. You all are doing a pretty fine job. There are some things, some aspects, some other timelines where it's not going quite as well, but the timelines that we're connecting with, the ones that we're dealing with here, you, the one that you're focused on, um, you're poised to succeed. Now, we don't know exactly how it's gonna play out because it's never happened before where a planet has gone through the ascension process with conscious beings on it before. So you've had beings who have gone through the ascension process. You have had uh, planets which have gone through the ascension process. Planetary ascension is um, not quite as common as the ascension of an individual or a society simply because of 
the span of time, if you will, because you're in time, we're going to use that as a reference, of the planetary body as opposed to the individual physical beings on the planet. But it has happened. Uh, it's far, far more rare. But Earth has done everything that she really wanted to, to do, anything that she set out to do within the third dimensional realm, and now she's ready to go on up to, to give this a go. So she's increasing her overall frequency along with all the beings on it. Now, some beings on the planet are not interested in going through the ascension process. It's just really simple. They wanted to be here during this time, but they weren't interested in increasing their frequency. What they will end up doing is, is going through a death cycle and reincarnating to a planet that has a similar paradigm to, to Earth. It's not right, it's not wrong. Ascension isn't a higher choice, it's just a different choice, and they're both valid. And these beings also are doing you a service. For those of you who are going through the ascension process, they are holding frequency um, at, a, at a lower rate so that it's not too intense for you. All right, so it, it keeps its own sort of pace, if you will. Do you all understand what we mean by that? So, For those of you who've got family members or friends who are, who are not necessarily examining their own lives, you know, they're, they're falling back in lower ways of victim, of victim consciousness, know that they are choosing a, a valid path and that you can support them by seeing, themselves, seeing them as a creator being choosing their own path. That will help them to pull themselves out if they want or for you to let go of judgment if they choose to stay where they are. Make sense? Mm -hmm. You're all so quiet. <laughs> all right. We'd like for you all to take a nice deep breath. <laughs> now, your true history has been hidden from you. All right. There's been a, a lot of manipulation that's happened on this planet. There have been other beings who are interested in what was going on. Earth has got a lot of resources, a lot of natural resources, and there are other beings who are interested in those resources. They've also played around a bit with your genetic line, your genetic coding. Now, that was also part of the game. That was also part of the experiment. They were part of your genetic line, and so it was allowed that they were to play around in your genetic material. Now. When you think of working with light and dark, you think of working that way within your own reality, with your peers, with your friends, with your family, with your co-worker, workers. But this also plays out inner, uh, planetarily. It also plays out intergalactically. So when these beings are working with you, you're still working on these same issues, all right? But what it's doing, it's helping you to re-empower yourselves as a galactic being because you have this notion that when you start to connect with other beings, especially those of us in the higher realms, that somehow you aren't as good because here you are down in the third dimension, what could you possibly know? You've forgotten that you are a spark of divine source energy that you have access to all the records and all the information uh, that you ever need. And you can access it at any time, at will. But you've forgotten this, so you don't go. You don't go to the libraries. You don't pull out the information. And so you've disempowered yourself. Now, when you start connecting with these other beings, you start to remember this. And so you start to re-empower yourselves at that galactic level. Because after you make this transition, Earth is moving vibrationally from the third into the fourth and then eventually into the fifth dimension. Once you shift into the fourth, you're going to find yourselves, again, part of the galactic community. You're going to have this awareness about all of these other species in the galaxy. And this game that's been going on for thousands and thousands of years, where these beings have been interacting with you and manipulating events, it is reminding you and helping you not to disempower yourself intergalactically or interdimensionally. Do you all understand what we mean by this? Yes. All right. So there have been other times on this planet. Uh, the last time really you were fully empowered to work with some of these beings was during Atlantis, where you had contact with these galactic beings. 
Um, there was some contact in Egypt, all right, but uh, with the fall of Atlantis, a lot of that um, was suppressed simply because of the trauma surrounding the downfall of Atlantis. Accessing some of those higher realms was very hard because of all of the pain that was being carried. You couldn't get out of your emotional way. It was very hard to increase your frequency enough to work with the higher realms. So as Earth exists in this third dimensional realm, around a physical vehicle, just as you have around your own physical vehicle, are other energetic fields. Today we're going to talk about some of the grids and templates that are around her. And a grid is simply, uh, if you want to think of it like a spider's web, you can. There are many different grids that you can plug into. Some of the vortices and portals will plug into energetic grids. And these grids simply are holding and running energy. And it can have, each of these grids can have a different vibrational component. It can have a, a different vibrational signature that it's holding different lessons, different energies. And the ones that you're working with now more and more have to do with the crystalline matrix of the planet and the upgrading of her natural energy systems. There are ley lines that run through the planet. These are energetic lines. If you want to think of it like veins, you can. It runs and carries energy throughout the entire planet. You are upgrading these ley lines with the crystalline matrix. And what we mean by crystalline is simply that the structure of these matrix resemble different crystals, what you consider to be crystals. All right, They take sacred geometric patterns and form to run specific frequencies through them. Now, these ley lines right now, some of them have been dormant for a while. Some of them need a good cleanse. They need an energetic uh, flush, if you will, to, to get them open again. And some of you are already working with some of that energy. Now, as you start to create this new crystalline matrix over these ley lines, what you will do is start taking segments. You do the same thing within your physical body, by the way. You start taking segments of these ley lines and superimposing the higher vibrational signature over the ley line with the crystalline matrix. So you start running the new energy through the higher vibrational pathway if you will, because the lower one can no longer hold it. So you're recreating these grids to run this new energy. Now how is the new grid created? Vibrationally through your thoughts. As you're holding higher vibrational thoughts, when enough of you start holding those thoughts, you start creating new grids, new pathways, because that energy has to have some way to run. As you're working as a collective, as you're working as a group, all of those thoughts start going into the record system of the planet herself. And that's what, uh, you know, if you want to think of it like putting books on a shelf together, all right, this is the, you know, this is the history section, this is the biography section, this is the nonfiction section over here. So what you're doing is building these pathways by grouping the vibrational signatures together. And eventually what you start creating is a matrix and a template. All right. As we go, we are depositing information into your energetic field. So don't worry if you feel somehow you're not getting all of this. You're getting exactly what you need today. And the packets of information that we deposit will continue to unfold over the coming months. And... Some things may not make a lot of sense now, but they may make more sense later as you go. We plant seeds. So you'll say, I've heard this before, I don't know quite where, um, and that's the seed that we planted so that the next time you hear it, you have that recollection. So you'll pay more attention. So don't worry, you're not quite getting all of it. So we're going to stop right here and see if you have any questions about Earth as the experiment. Yes. No questions. Simple? <laughs> All right. So, with this template, with these energetic grids, 
you're constantly creating new templates over and over and over and you've got all different levels of vibrational templates you've got those that are in density you've got those that are at the fourth dimensional level you've got those that are at the fifth dimensional level there are multiple versions of the planet which are coexisting one on top of another right now they're just simply in different vibrational ranges all, right? all a dimension is is a, a vibrational range and each of these vibrational ranges has a different set of rules it's a different game the fourth dimension is a transitory zone um, and the reason we call it that is because no one really stays in the fourth dimension beings will be there uh, as they go through an ascension process uh, or a descension process but they don't usually hang out there for long because they master and learn what they need to it's it's kind of a buffer zone if you want to think of it that way when you're coming out of density or going into density because it is so different it is a shift in uh, perspective all right and it's unlike any of the other dimensions um, as you as you enter into the third because it's because of it, the game and the setup so the fourth dimension allows you an opportunity to kind of work with the the multi-dimensional perspective again all right if you've been one who's been in density for a while and you want to come out that's where you're going to go you're going to play around in that now as we said the third dimensional game is one of linear perspective that you think that you're disconnected from source and all other things that's all an illusion you're never ever disconnected you are always one with all things but the perk of the game is that you get to experience this illusion and it is so unlike any of the other dimensions that's why we always say to you don't be in a rush to go through the ascension process you already know it's on the other side so the interesting part for you as a soul is what you're going through right now it's what you're experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis here how do you handle the emotions as they come up how do you integrate how do you deal with fear how do you deal with pain how do you deal with loss that's the interesting bit so don't be in a rush to get to the other side because as we said you already know what's on the other side that's where the rest of you is it's where your higher self is so as you transit into the higher realms into the fourth dimension you're able to expand your awareness you're able to switch those operating systems but because this is a grand experiment and you're taking with you with uh, with you this energetic vehicle that's already been down in the third dimension that has these programs that you're in the midst of rewriting there will be more for you to clear once you get into the fourth dimensional level you will still be processing and clearing and integrating until you get to the fifth dimensional level and we don't know how it's going to play out as we said because it's never happened before where you've gone through this process with the planet where you've taken this vehicle with you and with the planet now in the fifth dimension things are a bit more immediate you have full awareness that you are a creator being and you all are getting into the driver's seat and creating and manifesting for yourself does this mean it's a utopia no and we really want to get that across to you to make sure that you all are aware of that there is also this mindset that somehow that when you get to the other side everything's going to be perfect and we're not saying this to dispel uh, you know your enthusiasm but rather for you to know that there's still more to be created and more to explore and that it's an adventure all right because if it, everything was in unison everything was the same it'd be rather boring think of it as you creating harmony as opposed to all of you being in unison you're creating these beautiful symphonies of music and when you, when we look at your planet energetically it sings to us it has vibration and those vibrations as they're pulsing matter create sound so your planet is projecting sound to us sometimes um, doesn't always sound fabulous we'll be honest there's a little discord in there especially times where there's a lot of panic on the planet 9-11 is a perfect example when a lot of fear was generated that vibration um, was a bit disharmonious but also there were some rather special things created in that moment 
that was one of those pivotal turning points for you all where you could have created a completely different timeline. You all, as a collective, enough of you as a collective, decided to choose compassion instead of anger and judgment. And so you created a new template around the planet. You created a new grid, the grid of compassion, so that it made it possible for everyone else to plug into. So these grids and templates, if you want to think of it, it's like a, a switchboard operator's system, an old switchboard operator who plugs in and out uh, to get the calls through. That's what these templates do. They hold this vibratory frequency so that you can plug in and out. Everyone take a nice deep breath. Now, you've got templates for just about everything. All right, you've got templates on health and well-being. You've got templates on compassion, communication, cooperation, competition, um, harmony, balance, tranquility. And then there are darker ones, um, other grids that have been formed by some of these other beings, as we said, who've been participating with Earth for quite a while. Their agenda was to create and generate fear to keep you from waking up and remembering who you were so that you would change the balance of power. They wanted your natural resources and that was the whole, whole part of the game. Now, they're also aware that Earth is coming to the end of this grand cycle. All right. This was the time that was planned for Earth to go through the ascension process. Every 26,000 years you complete a cycle. But this is a cycle within a cycle. So this is the end of a universal cycle as well. And as you go through this process of ascension, as you all learn to integrate more light into your bodies, into your cellular structure, as you find more compassion, as you release more and more judgment, all of that information is given, if you will, or written, if you will, into each and every molecule of the universe. You are holographic in nature. And what we mean by that, and there are a lot of levels to this, so we're going to put it in the simplest terms that we can, is simply that if you take an image and you shatter it into 20 pieces, each of those 20 pieces is going to contain all the information of the whole. And when you make a change to any one piece, that change will be seen throughout the entire whole. Right? Each, each piece is going to show that change. So when you learn how to do something, when you learn how to integrate, when you learn how to ride a bike, when you learn how to fly a kite, all that knowledge and wisdom is then shared with the rest of the universe. You also have access to all this information. It's a lot to wrap your brain around, so oftentimes what we will do for the sake of assisting you is to break it into smaller pieces and simply put it at a planetary level. All right, so all the things that happen on the planet, you have access and wisdom and the wisdom to um, access. Do you all understand what we mean by holography? Do you understand mm -hmm. how this works? Yes. So Earth herself is a collective of beings. All right, she's not a single entity. When you remove yourself from the third dimensional realm and, in, and you are present in any of the higher dimensions, you understand that you are part of a collective. The two are never, ever separate. And that's why so often when you connect to us, uh, you connect to collectives. And we refer to ourselves as collectives. Uh, you know, you'll hear about the, uh, this command or that command or this collective, this uh, federation, this galactic federation. Um, but all beings at the highest levels are part of collectives. So Earth herself is a collective of beings who are holding resonance for the projection of a planet, planetary body. There are beings who are holding the projection of the entire solar system. There are beings who are holding the projection for the entire universe. And you're a part of that. You're holding that illusion. And it's just that. It's an illusion. This game is completely a projection. So all of you tend to have this desire to do things externally, all right, to make change. It's got to happen outside of yourselves because that's how you've been conditioned. 
But in reality, the higher way of working is to make change within self to affect change everywhere. So when you look at the planet and you see that she's in turmoil, that she's not healthy, that she's toxic, she's a reflection of you all on this planet as a collective. She is showing you where you all are at. So you can do things to clean her up, as it were, in the physical world, and that's, that's effective to some degree. But until you all start making that internal change in your overall vibrational signature and how you're interacting and connecting with all things, she will never be healthy because you're not healthy, because you're not connected. That's a big one, so we're going to say that again. Until you make change within yourself, to realign yourself, you will never have a, have a planet that's in alignment. Because she is a reflection of you as a collective. So what we recommend that you all start doing is working at the community level. All right? You can all handle seeing that and, and working with that level. It doesn't seem overwhelming. Because when you start thinking, well, how in the world are we going to work with the planet? That seems like a big project and you don't know how in the world you as an individual are going to be able to alter that. So what we recommend is you start looking at what you would like to see shifted within your community. How are you, gonna, how are you interacting with your community? What do you want to do vibrationally? How do you want to see that change? What, what do you want to pulse out? What vibration do you want to encounter? You may, not have, you may not have the skill set. You may not be someone who is an engineer or someone who is a permaculturist or you, you may not be someone who has had a lot of experience in that area. But what you do want to do is connect with the planet and pulse heart energy for her. So at the energetic level, what we would suggest is that you just simply start pulsing that out and tell the universe that you would like to be of service to hold that resonance. And you will start bringing in the right people and the right ideas to assist you in making that transition. And this is true for, for whatever it is that you want to manifest. You may not be able or you may not have the skill set or you may frankly not be interested in doing a particular activity that needs to be done. There may be something else that you're better at that you are interested in doing. Uh, and that other activity, somebody else is really gung-ho about doing it and they feel really good about it. Uh, you may not be aligned with that particular activity, but the overall vibration is what you want to create and generate. And you will start pulling in other people to be of assistance who want to co-create that with you. When you step into the frequency of wanting to be of service, and it is the highest frequency on the planet, that when you put yourself there vibrationally, all things start to flow. You will pull in the right people at the right time and in a very, very accelerated rate. So you don't have to have the know-how. You simply have to hold the vibration that that's what you want to create and the universe will bring you the tools to, to create and to experience that reality. Easy, yes? Yes. But you all get so far in your head and you think it's got to be hard. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how I'm going to make this happen. That's not your job. The universe will align you with the right people. You simply have to say, all right, I'm willing to be of service. Any questions so far? Yes? Um, uh, you said that there are a certain frequency or certain beings that are holding... Um, like the holographic concepts for the earth. Yes. And I saw something recently that, I would, if it's okay, could I mention what it is? Yes. And you can tell me if it's accurate or inaccurate. Or So um, I was over near Elizaville, which is uh, um, near Red Hook. And um, I saw what I thought was maybe possibly a spaceship. So in a meditation, I was in a Kundalini teacher training, I kind of found my mind going there on a journey and I went into this earth vortex and it was like a crystal cathedral with columns and I asked permission to go in and um, inside there were several circles of different types of aliens around this central being that felt very benevolent and like the face, all I could describe would be like little teeny 
angel wings in a in a, a matrix, uh, and it felt very, you know, beneficent and supportive of the earth, very mother like. Yes. Is that, is that accurate? Yes. Yes. And is that? Could you explain or share with us what's that frequency she's holding? Uh, what would be valuable? Well, there are some who are holding um, keepership, keepership, who are off planet. There's, there's not one of you on the planet right now who is, who is in physical form, who has 100% taken stewardship of the planet. And that's the next step for ascension. That's part of what you will all do. You will claim stewardship of the planet. You will take over that responsibility for maintaining her energy, mm-hmm. for assisting her in clearing and what you are encountering are some of the off-world beings who are holding that frequency. And these are part of the genetic line. Mm. Who are... Uh, these beings have awareness, many of them, not all, but many of them have awareness that they are multidimensional and that aspects of themselves are down here on the planet working. Some of them know that they are simply multidimensional and that was part of the game that they wanted to play. They wanted to be a keeper of frequency in holding the resonance for this grand experiment called Earth. Yeah, that's right. And that's what that's what you encountered. Now there are many many port- portals and vortices on this planet. Some of the portals go off world, okay. and when you open those, you can literally transport yourself to another world. Um, this is also how they access the planet through some of these energetic centers mm-hmm. to send frequency, hold frequency, infuse frequency. Mm-hmm. Now there are limits placed on these um, keepers. They're there to hold frequency a particular range of frequency without the amplitude being too high mm-hmm. um, because again this is an experiment and you're the ones who need to make the transformation mm-hmm. so if they're broadcasting this at a very strong signal it's going to be much easier for you to plug into and it kind of defeats the purpose of the game itself so there are limits placed on what they can do how they can interact with humans mm-hmm. There are all kinds of restrictions and rules placed around this experiment. And uh, most of the galaxy is uh, fully aware, those who at least are interstellar beings, are aware of the restrictions. And there are other groups of beings who kind of mind the store, who mind what's going on. And there are, again, some things that are allowed, such as the manipulation that we talked about earlier, because it helps with the growth of the planet and your your way of seeing yourself as galactic beings and and using your own discernment and empowerment. So that kind of behavior is allowed because it's part of the growth process. But there are other things that are not allowed. Time jumping um, is monitored uh, quite a bit. And, um, you know, when one time jumps, there's potential to alter a timeline by changing it too much. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when, when... timelines are jumped, it can destroy an entire timeline. It kind of rips the fabric. Uh, so that's monitored when you are, you are one who is not in the game moving through it, but rather one who is observing and projecting yourself into artificially into a timeline. So that's observed. But yes, what you're tapping into are all these beings. Uh, and in fact, what you where you went was to view another aspect of yourself, all right, to to view part of your line, your lineage, Mm -hmm. and to see them holding those energies, Mm -hmm. to give you a taste of that frequency so that you can start holding it here while in form, while in body for the planet. They did feel very compassionate. Lots of compassion for Earth. Lots of compassion, but you all are so disconnected. You don't have a lot of compassion for yourselves. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And this is why we say to you that you'll never have a healthy planet until you start having healthy selves. Mm -hmm. You've got to love yourselves. When you love yourself, then the planet will reflect that love. Mm -hmm. Then she'll be healthy. Mm -hmm. You all have toxic bodies right now. So guess what? The planet's toxic. And this is what we mean about working holographically. When you clean up your emotional state, when you clean up your vibrational state, that's when the planet will start to reflect that change as well. 
Uh, you know, we've said before, and we'll say it again, that the most toxic thing you do to this planet is hold negative emotion. It's your fear. It's not the oil. It's not the chemicals. Don't get us wrong, those aren't good. But your negative emotions, your fears, that's what creates those physical things, those toxins. It's what attracts it. It's what creates that form. All right? And when you start cleaning that up, you're no longer going to create them. You can dissipate toxicity through vibrational signature, through frequency. So if you've got toxic water, and you already have discovered this, it's out in mass consciousness, that if you're projecting love, light, compassion, towards that, it's going to alter the chemical structure. That's working holographically. Because everything is generated first at the energetic level and then it is projected into physical reality. You are a projection of an energetic state. So if you change the energetic state, the physical changes. But you all think that you've got to change the physical without changing the energetic. It doesn't work that way. Sometimes when you work with the physical, it can kind of turn a light on. You say, oh, something's off energetically. We need to switch that as well. But most of you simply try to work with the physical. That's why sometimes when uh, you all are ill, you have something cut out and it comes right back because you haven't changed the energetic template. You've got to change that energetic template and that's what you're in the, in the midst of doing. So does that help with your question there? Yes. It's also about something you spoke about was, um, you know, the the off beings who wanted our resources and wanted us to be um, in fear. And I do energetic healing, kind of, and I think of it almost shamanically. And I've been seeing aliens, and I found some that aren't just mind projections or negative thought forms or fields or entities. These are, I felt, there were in aliens, and I saw them in a certain, like, very skinny, almost metallic, insect-like faces, and I would have to put them back in a wormhole back to their planet. And they had, like, a mother that I was trying to work with. And is, is this, um, can you help me out with what I'm seeing? Well, you're seeing some of the, uh, some of the other beings that are working on this planet. Some are insectoid, some are reptilian, some are humanoid. Uh, who don't have the highest um, right, good. highest vibration or intent to support Earth. Right. And we hold no judgment there. Mm -hmm. It's still helping you all to learn. Many of you are working with these things. You've agreed to allow them to sample your DNA so that they can work with the emotional states. Some of these beings don't have a huge range of emotion, remember? Mm -hmm. So... You agree, and, and this is the case with many of your abductions, that you agree to allow them to sample your DNA so that they can start to work with the emotional field. So, you know, again, again, encoded in that DNA is all the emotional experience. So they're creating hybrids so that they can learn to work with emotions. Some of them have gotten so intellectual that they've lost the ability to reproduce. And you have so much compassion for them at the soul level. You say, well, I'm going down to earth. I'm not going to remember what's going on. So sure, take my DNA. Not a problem. And many of you are part of those species. And you're a representative who gets sent down into the physical vehicle here. And you say, sure, I want to help that world. So it's an act of compassion. But the way that it's translated and interpreted when you're in physical form and you see yourself as separate is a violation. Because you forgot that you made that contract. Because down here you think you're limited. You think that you are just this vehicle. That's all there is. And you get caught up in the fear of it. Mm -hmm. But your higher self, that expanded part of you, said, yes, let's do this. This, this is great. I'm not going to remember. And that's part of it because also this has been going on for lifetime after lifetime. But now because the vibration um, is higher and you're closer to the fourth dimensional realm, you are getting bleed-throughs so that you're seeing and remembering whereas in other lifetimes that memory wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's just part of you expanding your awareness. And as you send these other beings compassion, mm -hmm. all right, when you see them, and you're not reacting out of fear, um, that's, the, that's the best thing that we can recommend. Mm -hmm. Because as you 
are pulsing out, that's what you're going to get back because of the structure of the game here. Mm -hmm. If you're pulsing out fear, you're going to get mm -hmm. fear back mm -hmm. or a fear-based response. Mm -hmm. If you're pulsing out love, you're going to get love back. And if you're working with entities who aren't interested in experiencing love, they're going to go away. It's not going to feel good because all the stuff is going to get charged and activated, all the lower stuff. Mm -hmm. And why do they want us to be suffering? Well, they don't have, again, the emotional range that you do. They're not feeling all the compassion that you can feel. So for them, it seems like a very logical procedure. It is for the survival of their race. And, and remember, they've got their own set of distortions, mm. just as you have. And... To the way that they are working, it seems very logical and it's not a big deal. Just as you have many on this planet who have very little compassion. It's just not part of their makeup, not part of their perception of reality. Mm -hmm. But for someone who's tapped into, plugged into compassion and you're feeling the results of all of your actions as being part of a collective and that comes with higher awareness, you feel that and you don't want to experience it. You choose a higher vibrational selection. But that's what you are helping them to learn. Mm -hmm. By going through this process of ascension, all these beings who are participating, they're also going to learn from your lessons. Many of them also know that this is the end of the universal cycle, that there is a, a, a rift opening, if you will, around the planet that is shifting into a higher dimension and they want to be a part of it but because they're not able to access their emotional body and they can't clear their own field they're trying to do it technologically they're trying to work and generate enough fear because they're feeding off of fear that's the range that they are familiar with and they're hoping many of them are hoping that they can kind of find a, a workaround all right rather than get into the higher realms through compassion and expansion they're hoping they can do it technologically and this is an old game, a very old game that you all have played many times on this planet. It was one of the greatest lessons that you learned in Atlantis. Inner technology versus outer technology. And it's the same game going on. You all are working on your inner technology that allows you to open up a portal and a vortex within your own vehicle, your chakra system, that allows you to transport yourself anywhere you want to go. All right, and when those are disconnected in this other species, they can't activate them. They can't get there, so they create outer technology. Again, at the big level, not right, not wrong. It's just a game. Interesting one, fascinating one, but there's so many levels and layers to what's going on here on Earth. And that's why everyone's watching. It's fascinating, and it's going to impact everyone. And the other part here, and we'll, we'll share with you, is that when you get into the higher realms, many of you are going to become galactic teachers. You're going to start working with these very beings that you are fearing because they need love and support. They're confused. Many of them have been playing this role for a very, very long time and they're ready to start playing another game. They're bored. It's like playing the same role day after day after day without variation. Again, because there's not a huge wide range in their emotional experience. And interacting with Earth is helping them to expand that emotional range. But you'll start to become galactic teachers. You're going to start to teach other beings about integration. And from where you're standing right now, many of you say, how in the world is that possible? And we'll tell you it's possible because you're divine source energy. You're not starting at the bottom. You're not starting down in the in the 3D, uh, 3D world and working your way up. doesn't work that way. You simply decide what game you want to play in and you can project yourself there. So do we answer your original question there? Mm -hmm. All right. Good point, thank you. And you're going to see more, more of them. Don't be frightened by them. The more you expand your own energetic awareness, all of you, you're going to start to see into other realms. And uh, a little later, we're going to talk about the pixies and the fairies, but you're going to start working more and more with these other beings who are in the higher realms. As you increase your frequency, you're going to start seeing them. One of our favorite questions is, when are you all coming down to help? And we say, we're not. You're coming up. All right? When are we going to see you? Well, it doesn't behoove you for us to lower our frequency. It 
it generates too much fear in mass consciousness. So we're not going to do it. But when you raise your own frequency, you're ready. And then you'll start to see us. Many of you can see us now. We appear as blue light as you look at us as a collective. And you may see a variety of geometric shapes. Uh, probably the most common uh, that you would view us as if you're looking at a flat, it's going to look like a triangle. Uh, but, you know, it's a tetrahedron. 